before we begin, thank you very much to Joseph T for joining my Patreon campaign over at patreon.com forward slash TJ Omega. Everything helps, guys. You have no idea how much I genuinely appreciate it. It keeps the channel going and lets it lets me continue doing this a little bit longer. And the more you guys help me out, the more I can do it. So honestly, thank you. So I wanted to talk about some important episodes throughout Transformers animation. Uh, specifically, I wanted to go into episodes that established in animated continuity a lot of really important things that all Transformers fiction has seemed to touch on or put right at the core of its story ever since. Now, we're going to a couple things to establish before we begin. There are some concepts here that originated in comic books and guidebooks. Now, I tried to keep those to a minimum, but they are important elements, and seeing them in animation is what properly establishes them, since, car since Transformers is essentially always going to come down to the cartoons. So, uh, we are going to be basing this list off of that. Also, nothing in this list is going to be based on toy sales. You know, we could do a whole bunch of lists about... Uh, I, I could, there's so many I could include that were just like, you know, like, oh, this is when combining was introduced. This is when headmasters were introduced. But that's all just for selling toys. This is all, this is all fiction based. This is all just concepts and story beats that became bigger things throughout Transformers. So with that out of the way, here's 10 of the most important episodes of Transformers cartoons. And we are going to start with G1 and one of the earliest examples of a major element being added in simply because the writers decided to create it for an episode. And that is Vector Sigma, the master computer that created Transformer life, or in this case, personality cores. We were kind of like dodging uh, a, few, a few topics back in G1. Uh, but yeah, essentially, this was the computer that programmed a brand new Transformer with their own personality and brought them to life. Now, of course, this episode would also bring us the key to Vector Sigma. That became a big thing later on, especially in Beast Machines. But it's Vector Sigma itself that persists. And while it's not really played heavily in stories anymore, because let's be honest, only having one source of brand new Transformers is somewhat limiting, and G1 didn't stick to it either, it's still a pretty important element to have this core that explains like why Transformers are the way they are and what creates them, at least in the G1 continuity. For number nine, we actually have a tie because it's a little bit arguable where this really establishes itself. And that is the concept of Primus, the god of all Transformers. Of course, this was originally from the, uh, the original Marvel comics, but we do have an, a few animated examples to properly establish Primus in the, like, the core media of Transformers. The first mention was in Beast Wars in the episode Bad Spark. So, in the point where Rhinox says, Primus help us all, which is the first time, essentially like establishing you know, a god uh, presence in Transformers. And then, but that was it. That was just a mention. Just to show that, yeah, Primus is a thing in the cartoons now. It was Transformers Energon where we really have to go to actually see Primus. And that happened in the first episode, Cybertron City. L surprised me too to find out I would have to put an Energon episode in this list. But it's where we see Primus for the first time as the living core of Cybertron. And as the living core of Cybertron is how Primus has generally appeared any time since in fiction, especially in Cybertron, where, of course, he transformed into, you know, Primus as a robot. So, they both get a mention here because both of them do their job to establish Primus, whether it's the first mention or the first appearance, you decide which one's more important. As long as we're talking about Primus, let's talk about his kids, because the concept of the 13 was floated around for a long time in Transformers fiction, but it only it first existed in the Dreamwave guidebooks for the original uh, modern Transformer comic books. However, uh, since then, the concept is kind of mishandled. Everyone kind of threw their own little version of it out there. It was very hard to kind of nail down what the 13 were, who the 13 were, and they ended up using it in the live action as, uh, oh, well, there's like seven of them, seven original primes. 
So we, we couldn't even keep the numbers straight for a little bit. Transformers Prime, and specifically the episode One Shall Rise, part one, establishes the original 13 Primes as like a core unit where each one is representing something different, a different aspect of Transformers existence. And the first time we got a solid lineup of the 13, of course, not really a full explanation of them. In fact, the sequel of this, uh, the 2015 Robots in Disguise, would give us a little bit more of the 13 in animation. Uh, I feel like the 13 is a cool concept that has never quite been handled correctly. I think it's it's still floated around out there. We still get mentions of, you know, the likes of Solus Prime and Onyx Prime was mentioned recently in Cyberverse. So we do still have them as a thing, even though they are still kept pretty vague. Number seven brings us back to G1 and a very familiar transport method that Transformers has used f- since, you know, the very beginning. And that is the Space Bridge, all the way back in Transport to Oblivion. So the Space Bridge was their way of getting characters to and from Cybertron, as well as explaining how Megatron gets his stash of Energon cubes back to the planet to revitalize it. It was a iffy the way they kind of created the rules to it. It appeared randomly, it opened up at random times, the Autobots could use it for some reason too. Um, but it did create a really interesting element that allowed Cybertron to be part of the story itself. Since then, space bridges have become pretty synonymous with travel in Transformers, whether it is a similar teleportation method or warp gates that would appear in like Transformers Animated. In fact, we even evolved the concept into the Ground Bridge, the prime version where Autobots could just travel from one place to another on the planet. So, it's still a very important element, uh, basically giving us fast transport pretty much anywhere in any Transformer fiction. For number six, this is going to get a little bit weird, but hang on, there is a full point to this. So, I'm giving this one to Starscream's Ghost. So, this is where, of course, Starscream comes back to life. And this one, I am I am cheating a little bit, because the whole reason Starscream's Ghost exists in G1 is because they were going to continue selling the toy uh, later on uh, in uh, the third year of Transformers. See, back then, if a toy kept selling, they just kept making it. So Starscream and Bumblebee, they were released for three straight years. You know, imagine that. But in this case, I'm making an exception because it, it establishes that a Transformer's life uh, persists even after their body is destroyed. Generally, it joins the Matrix. In Starscream's case, it did not. And that's how we got his mutant spark. This gave uh, this gave some reasoning for Optimus Prime to return and come back to life at the end of the season. This also gave us Rampage in Beast Wars. It also established a recurring thing of Starscream just refusing to die, where even after he is killed, he's still alive somewhere. He can possess a body, get a brand new body, etc. And he's still going to be a pain in Megatron and Optimus Prime's sides. But it is basically established that even after a Transformer's dead, we can still bring him back and we can still do things with them if we really want to. And since we're speaking of this, that has to bring us to our next topic, and that is the spark itself. From the episode, appropriately enough, the spark. It was the first time where we established that there is a core being to what Transformers are. Their very soul given a physical form. It is an object that they can see and interact with. You know, and, and that kind of makes sense for machine life forms, you know, and I like the idea of the spark because, you know, even even the car you drive or your parents drive, you know, like it starts up with the spark that you know that you have a spark plug for that's that's how your car starts you know and that kind of makes sense with the whole machine aspect the spark itself even though a lot of shows didn't use its physical form we do in a few shows we do get to see physical sparks still but the concept of the spark and the phrase spark is still used to this day in modern transformers and to great effect So this one is an extremely well-enduring one and a concept that I don't think is ever going to go out of fiction. Number four brings us to Beast Machines. In fact, it's bringing us to the very first episode because we're going to be talking about the AllSpark. So prior to this, 
they had established the matrix as where uh, Sparks went when, you know, when the body was destroyed. Okay, so we kind of reworked that in Beast Machines to where now it is the all spark. You know, when they say all are one, literally, this is the all spark. That's the whole thing, right? All right, it, it is the well of all sparks, which is another thing that was that was coined later on. But essentially, it's basically, it is where sparks go after the Transformer has died. So, uh, this one, unfortunately, um, while this is established to be something of a Transformer afterlife situation, the movies kind of perverted what it originally was. Now, it, it is essentially... Um, Essentially, it has become a mix of the AllSpark and Vector Sigma. It is the source of Transformer life in the live-action movies, and because the live-action movies re-established exactly what the AllSpark was, then it moves on to being a whole different thing. It becomes the MacGuffin, where you know that originally would have been the Matrix. Now it's this, um, and yeah, even cartoons got into this. Like animated, it was all about you know the all spark. You know we have an all spark available in Cyberverse. Uh, so this is just a thing now. But hey, give them credit. Uh, Beast Machines managed to create something that did endure, even though everyone changed what it was. How about we go back to Beast Wars real quick, and we'll go through the last element of this, which is the proto form. This one. Pretty pretty self-explanatory, so I'm going to explain it. The protoform is the Cybertronian's body before it is actually the actual Cybertronian. It is essentially a blank. It is what you get when you just like craft a transformer and then you have to scan it in and program it, and that's when it takes shape. The uh, the concept of a protoform has evolved considerably, and. We saw proper protoform and animated. We saw a different version of it in the move in the live action movies, where it's essentially what Transformers are before they scan an alt mode on Earth. Um, ever since we, you know, and then uh, the IDW comics, I think, did a great job at creating a whole subclass of Transformers that craft protoforms into their bodies, which I think is an interesting concept. You know, and again, that's where both the Spark and the Alt and the Protoforms continue to uh, establish themselves exactly what they are. Protoforms, yeah, fantastic concept, explains a bit of origin of Transformers, and gives us a lot of really cool plot elements. You know, essentially, it's a newborn, full of potential. It wouldn't be right to do this list without mentioning the very first episode of Transformers, but and while I could go through a myriad of things that this episode introduced us to, Cybertron, Megatron, you know, the Decepticons, the Autobots, etc., etc. Almost all of that is down to uh, toy sales, you know. You know, this is, you know, um, essentially all the things that we do just, to, just for the sake of selling toys in a show. Fictionally, this is where we get things like Alternate mode scanning, which is essentially toy-based, you know, is where we get the concept of Cybertron itself, and it's also where we get Energon. So, of course, Episode 1 of Transformers is going to give us pretty much all the most basic elements that most Transformer shows revolve around, or at least go in-depth to. You know, Energon these days is not the big MacGuffin it used to be. You know, you see in uh, Cyberverse, they're just drinking it from mugs at McAdams. Like, it's just not a big deal anymore. But it's the lifeblood of Transformers, it's their energy source, so it's always going to be important, and this is where we got the first clue about it. And then, of course, things like alt-mode scanning is, you know, completely reinvented by Beast Wars, and well, not essentially reinvented, essentially the same, but, you know, that's a thing that's recurring even to the live-action movies. Alt-mode scanning was a major element. So, of course, the first episode is going to generate a lot of things that belong on this list. So what's more important than the very first ep... So what's more important than the very first episode of Transformers? How about going back to finding out the origins of Transformers themselves? Five Faces of Darkness, Part 4. Now, Five Faces of Darkness in general gave us our first glimpse inside the Matrix, but Part 4 is where we really got to find out what it meant to be the accumulated knowledge and wisdom 
of all the Autobot leaders past. In this episode, we got to see Rodimus diving into the Matrix to discover the origins of Transformers, the Quintessons, creating Cybertron as a factory, the military hardware that became Decepticons, the consumer goods that became Autobots, the uprising, the developing of emotions, the start of the war, developing the uh, art of transforming, the birth of Megatron. So many elements that went into the actual origin story of Transformers. Now, to be fair, a lot of this has been twisted around. You know, Primus and the 13 have started becoming like the new accepted origin story to Transformers. But you do still see fiction from time to time going back to the Quintesson origin. And I personally prefer the Quintesson origin. Uh, but that's just me, you know. Uh, ultimately, it is an extraordinarily important episode, especially within the realms of G1 and Beast Wars. It is the source point of everything that is Transformers and everything that uh, basically established why everything exists in the first place. So, yeah, easily for me, the most important episode of Transformers in any series. So that is my list. What did I miss off? What elements of Transformers did I forget? Because I'm sure I forgot something that deserves to be in here more than, you know, Starscream not dying or Vector Sigma, you know. But let me know in the comments below. And hopefully in the next time, I'll see you for 10 more things that I want to talk about.